Hello, YouTube. Welcome back to America's Challengers VOD review. I had my last cast of uh, my Riot schedule today. It was this game between Fear Star Forge and Fuego. First best of five in the tournament. Fear Star Forge were able to find the 3 1, what I predicted at the end of the stream yesterday uh, on both NACL and here. Uh, so we're going to have to see how that got done. I, thought, I still thought Fuego really impressed me in this tournament. They beat my expectations by a lot. But Fear Star Forge played more so up to my expectations today, which I was happy to see. Uh, so with that said, thanks so much for all the support as always, guys. Uh, feel free to drop a like, comment, and or a sub if you want to see more content. I still got finals to go through tomorrow and then Worlds content as well on the stream. Uh, so yeah, uh, with that said, follow me everywhere at CubbyXX, especially on Twitch where I stream these live. And let's get into Game 1. Game 1 draft. All right. Fear Star Forge taking away the Rumble, Udyr, and Vi. Brand, Smolder, Yone taking away game one. This ends up being a Varus first pick with Azir Jin. Uh, this combo can play off each other okay. Like Jin kind of makes some space for Azir at times, uh, which I like. And you can outrange the Varus with the Jin. And it's Kasante Rel, uh, Rel being a very high prio support pick. And then it is the Nar matchup in the Kasante, which we like because we got plus 3 AD. Uh, after that, Mid laner's ban to protect the Zir. Uh, jungle support ban. Also a jungle ban uh, here. I think that... Yeah, I think Amumu was a decent one. But with Nautilus picked, it ends up being a blind Ivern and then Corky and then a Jarvan. Um, I think that Fuego, a little bit more is on them to actually play out their lanes well. Especially these solo lanes. Uh, whereas I, I feel like Fear Star Forge, if they hold strong, they can lean on Ivern scaling to be okay. They don't have a ton of DPS because this ends up being a poke Varus, so they have to make sure that their Wombos are good, uh, as this is their one DPS threat. Or is this just kind of like dogpile and make sure we get kills? That's the goal. Let's see if they achieve their goal. All right, uh, game one runes. Standard. This is standard for uh, Vern, by the way, because you want to get boots early on him, so going cash back's appropriate. I think boots are more valuable than cash back um, in that tree, unless you need to go early boots. I really like how ABO has been taking this a lot. I think that's a really good point. And then also Balo, my goat, conditioning overgrowth still. Um, also the Conqueror is here, looking like it's a lot more standard on this patch, with Fleet being taken down a peg. So we're just seeing Conqueror being ran. It's either that or Grasp. Or PTA, a lot less Fleet for Azir. Uh, Azir's been a little bit underwhelming for me in this patch, I will say. Just really important to have carries with dashes. Late word from A to D. Vern's going to prep the topside camps, whereas G4 is going top to bot. Uh, Balo walking in to eat this trade ended up being not super great. Winston does trade it out, but... Uh, Balo has to base early. Uh, this matchup for NAR, I think the 3AD, like, actually was pretty big for NAR. I think we're going to see a lot of NAR. Uh, it, depending on what the blinds are for Worlds, I do think we're going to see some NAR. I'm I'll be surprised about, or interested to see, like, how the NAR Renekton matchup is. If the AD, like, makes a big difference there or not. Like, if we do have any matchups changed by the 3AD for NAR, I feel like this is one of them where it's just more favorable for NAR. Balkan Gamer VK. Hey, brother. Just got through my first day at HueFest casting LOL. It was an amazing experience. I loved it. Watch my VOD and already know. You can improve. Like to thank watching you over the years. It's my motivation to where to learn from. Thank you, Kobe. 
Hey, that's cool. I really appreciate you stopping by and standing up, Walking Gamer. I had a lot of fun at HueFest in the past, so I hope you guys are having a good time taking advantage of that opportunity. All right, big difference here was Winsome breaking the shield. And then Balo, this hook, he just goes down to the queue. Aftershock expired, I believe. Yeah. So, well, well done. Uh, level 1 trade was really big. And then uh, Viros has to run the cleanse. Yeah, good, good on you for going through your own VOD too, Balkan. Like, actually, like, thinking about stuff to work on for tomorrow. I think that's really, really good. Really good stuff. Process matters, man. It, process wins out in the, at the end of the day. A lot of people work towards the same goal. It's the people that have the better process that actually make those goals happen. It was awkward watching myself. You will get used to it. You will get used to it. But yes, it is awkward. Alright, after this, the Jin walking mid was kind of curious for me. I, I know this is a very opportunistic play, but uh, we're kind of just trading sides of the map here, as it does end up being a dragon taken. Uh, Instinct is not able to get this wave in, though, which is a bit of a bummer, because he's isolated. So I'm wondering, like, if they could have calmed the fact that... Oh, not really. Yeah, Instinct's just coming out of base. Alright. Never mind. Scratch that idea. Um, not much this game, just like a small aid for Fear Star Forge. Like, the Nars I had, but everyone else is kind of just up. Um, next, he gets to clear out, like, the rest of his camps here. So, like, the first couple clears for him has been fine. He is spotted on this ward, though, but he's going to go help get a control ward out. So, they're really protecting this bot lane on this crash. They thought that Mataz might be down here. That's my just, just my hunch. And it, that would have been available slash viable for him. But now, uh, we'll see about the grubs. That said, uh, this grub was left up. By Fear Starforge. I actually like this call this game. Uh, when this Grub goes down, it's like the second Grubs don't spawn. I, I feel like with the solo lanes we have, these two can use Grubs a lot more than what Fear Starforge can do. So I, I thought that the, the goal of delaying the Grubs, especially just given that bot, uh, top lane was down and gets pressured in this matchup, was a really smart call from Fear Starforge um, and XU. I, I thought it was really, really, really smart. And then Phil finds a solo bowl. And it, it's mini. This is like the one timer where it's kind of bad for ADD. And ADD just eats the full combo. The flash is good. But it doesn't matter. Uh, Balda walked mid here and is spotted. Really good ward being dropped here by Winsome on his walk. The... It was a first base here for Fear Starforge bot lane, and Winsome uses this timer really well. Um, and they know Montaz just took the grub, so Winsome can get away with this. It's really, really good. Ends up being a lot of good scouting, and they spot Ball on uh, his way to mid here. Really really nice use of uh, that vision turn from Winsome, by the way. And props to Ball for like actually dropping the controller there to stop it. That said, this was uh, unwarranted. As Jarvan's just not close to being here yet. So, you like he could have waited for that, but and then Jarvan's an award. Actually, fam, you like I didn't know if he was waiting for a smine or like if he was like, able to prep that camp afterwards. All right now, keep in mind when some on the Bala kill, like he they burn. 
couple flashes here. It's Chain of Corruption afterwards from Instinct. Oh, it's nice of you, uh, Balkan. I appreciate that. Thanks for dropping the tier one. Uh, but I really like this for Fuego because, like, that skirmish, they got Bala. Well, Bala's back, and you're missing the bot lane ultimates and the Ivern ultimate. So Bala just goes, and they open up, and they end up winning. Good play from Zelt. Good, good target focus. Yep. Good job. Instinct was out of the fight, and then ABO trying to walk in here was kind of crazy. So that's a bad one from, uh, from Nick or ABO. Nice for Montas to step up and tank for Bala. And then they get the Drake. Well played. Uh, who's your Dark Horse in Worlds? Damwon Kia. Or uh, Damwon Plus. Or D, D Plus. I think the meta changes are high key really good for them. I don't know how sh like what their scrims have been like. I've got no inside info. But I, I think the meta change is like exactly what Showmaker and Lucid wants. Scrim for Harrisburg as well, and oh my god, yeah. Hey, Cubby, is there hope for NA to win finals? I don't know. Like, I think Fear Starforce showed some better stuff today. Philip had a really good series. He deserved our MVP. Um, But uh, I, I don't think Philip's going to get the same advantages against Hedon. Hedon's been playing really well. Pain's a good team. Uh, I, I'm I'm interested to see what happens tomorrow. I'll be enjoying tuning in. That's for sure. Anyway, uh, it's a win on bot and top here for Fear Star Forge. Philip finds a solo kill. It's then the Herald take. A TP does come in though when ADD spawns. And Winston's gonna go in. Answer TP. Still, it's support for jungle. Really nice from Exu here. This root does get the flash out of Zelt, which I think is very important. Because they can punish that later. Yeah, good retreat from Fierce Starforge. I, I, I like what they did in this game because I think the Ivern comp, like going into Fuego, they, they just like to forever fight. Like this team just loves to fight. So by going Poke and Ivern, you, if you play it well, you never give Fuego a chance to fight on even conditions. And that happened in game one and game four with how Fear Star Forge played. I don't know if that was a read into Fuego or just stuff that Fear Star Forge has been playing and playing well, but it looked good for them today. It looked really good. It is crazy seeing ADD play in this tournament. It was crazy seeing ADD. Ivern going to be heavy prior or bans? Um, I think they buffed up some of the other junglers around Ivern that can break him early. So I think he will be prioed, but I don't know if that's going to land him in, like to be a ban list. I think a lot of teams are comfortable handshaking Ivern Maokai too. So, yeah. I think there'll be some teams that decide to play Ivern and prioritize it, and some that don't. He's a goofy champion, and to be fair, like that's kind of where he should be. I think he's still strong. I just don't think he's like permaban game every game strong. Like teams will use and abuse him or not. Um, I really like what Fear Starforge did here, by the way. So, the all the waves are even. They are dropping top for this, but like Philip, they see him. Uh, they see Fuego on the top side. Then they just get this wave in, and ABO goes to play this wave. So now when they have bot wave all the way in, that's when they choose to actually play this. So it is a trade for top outer for the dragon. They did deny some of the wave, and now that Fuego has to respond, Fear Star Forge, they have the option to like, actually play this one fast, but again, Fuego has to respond through mid. So now Philip actually gets the bounce and ABO gets to catch the bot wave. So we have a scenario where Fuego are overgrouping in this scenario. Because we deny some of this wave away from Azir and Philip catches everything on the other side. And then we're denying the top wave and ABO is catching everything bot. Now the play is bot for Fuego and that's a good call. But they don't get there in time. Like uh, Winsome and Ivern are here to cover so ABO gets everything and it's just a win in the long haul for Fear Starforge. I thought they put that sequence really well actually. Yeah, you need the right games and comps for Ivern. And he's just a goofy champion. So after that, we group into mid. Take the turret. 
ADD has a very deep TP. But Philip is able to at least kind of get on the Zelt. So forces out the big combo. And then if Philip hits this Q, he, 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 uh, they kill uh, Viros, but he missed the Q. Yeah. If he hits that, that's another kill. Honestly, if he hits that, it might be like an actual Baron Chancer call. In that case. Probably not actually. Moonstone's in base. Yeah, Moonstone's in base. Moonstone's big. <laughs> they push here from uh fear like they spot two bot i don't really get this one from fuego because it really does open up like hey if we drop mid wave then which fear does they just get the point in the top hard because two were spotted bot so now a tp is forced to answer another resource burned and fear star forge do not overcommit. so again fuego overgrouped Star Force able to play out more lanes, which especially going into a NAR should not be the case. NAR, the NAR team should be the team that's playing out more lanes than Fear Star Forge if this game's going correctly for Fuego. The Fuego overgrouping and like again the Ivern just really, really valuable, keeps everyone topped off. Poke advantage is in the hands of Fear Star Forge with the Varus and the Corky Rockets. Uh the one issue of this game is that they are only 80. I was surprised to not see more steel caps. Nice, they got not arm. And then this TP. Oh, it did connect. But ABO again gets this wave all the way in. It's like Fuego just are not playing this wave. They're going to look for a fight instead. And they don't get it on the win some. And then it's just they lose stuff elsewhere, you know? Uh, Fear Starforge 1 3 1, Yanya. So you have your NA versus Bronzil rematch. I know you wanted it. Again, Fuego completely dropping both bot and top. They're refusing to play on the lanes. And then ADD. ADD is no TP. Uh, you can see up there in the corner, he's walking to respond to top lane. He is miles late to this play because Fuego overgrouped early. Philip gets a hell of an angle. They catch Montaz in the back of the pit. Well played by Winsome. And then Philip just has a crazy angle. ADD just got TP up. So, but he walked to join. I really like this from Philip. Gets the flash from his ear, and then able to just easily turn on the Viros, who's still down flash. And the ADD got nothing done. And fortunately, ADD got smashed. Except for game three. He did some uh, some clapping game three. Yeah, that sequence, like, again, Fuego just way over groups uh, for stuff. And part of it, like, was actually part of their charm, uh, and, like, why they were winning in this tournament. Just catching teams off guard, but I feel like Fear Starforge were a lot more disciplined today. I um, definitely learned from facing Fuego a little bit. Like, hey, these guys are just going to fight, yeah? Hey, they're just going to fight. Phillips up a full item and a level on ADD. Not how the match is supposed to go. Also, I'm I'm always down for Shojin J4, but I think Sunder Sky plus Shojin into this draft. Like you're too squishy. You just need Sterax. I think we're a little bit too squishy here as Fuego. World's dead start in four days. Very pog. Alright, pull off the Baron, they get Ball of Flash. Uh, the Root found Mataz, and again, Winsome sends it. So they actually get a fight. This isn't the best fight. The, the Philip Q3 hits 3, and that made the fight really hard. 
I think Philip could have played that one a little bit better, honestly. Um, at least he gets out. But... I think this E, I know, like, what he's escaping, the angle he's trying to take on uh, Virus. I mean, he does pull the flash, but it does kind of set him up to be stuck between a rock and a hard place against Zelt. So that was a bummer. I feel like if he just charges up the W instead of the E, it's better here. I think that's what I was looking for. Yeah, I, I, if he charges up the W, then like, he just flash follow onto Virus, whatever he goes. So I do think that Philip misplayed that a wee bit. Good flash for Virus, though. It's like if he W's then autos, you get the Iceborne proc, and then you can just dash follow. I said good good take, and they just get freebies. Uh fear to not ban Diego this game. And then Mataz sneaks in and he links it. This is pretty sick from Mataz. Mataz. It's cat plus flash. Or cat plus smite, sorry. He also almost got out, which is kind of crazy. Instinct has a big flash, and then Zelt gets a triple kill. So this was uh this was tough from Fear Star Forge. I mean I think they had ways to keep Montas out of the pit, so I was okay with this, but they are definitely low. Like they're waiting for a redemption, right? So yeah. I have the root connected from XU, then like that. Ends up stopping him, right? Like that route went sideways from the EQ. The chain of corruptions also went sideways. So we just missed everything from Fear Star Forge. I think it's the right call from Fear Star Forge. They can keep him out of the pit, but someone's got to wait. Like we can't throw everything at him before Jarvan EQs, you know? Like both the route and the chain of corruption goes wide. If he EQs with no flash, then we throw shit at him, you know? I think just a little bit of impatience there from Fear Star Forge cost him. That's a triple kill to Zelt, which is significant on the Azir, you know? And it got him a soul point, Ocean. So, was really big. Really helped get them back into the game. Or at least have a chance. The fans have been awesome as always. It's really cool to see like a packed arena and just people excited about playing. All right, this fight. Cooldowns are still up. Winston just finds a really good catch. Um, this is off of Philip, by the way. I think we may need the replay to look at this because Philip hits a Q. Th yeah, okay. So you can kind of see at the top of your screen right here. See, okay, you can see the Q3 animation. See this? This is Cassante Q3. Like that particle. It knocked in uh two. Yeah. So you can see they got the bot land and then Winston was able to full combo and Instinct just kills them both with the poke varus pretty much. Now Instinct does go down, but he already blew his load. Um and Philip well, I didn't actually I missed this. Philip Flash to follow up on the Zelt. ADD throws him in, but he still gets to follow up on the Azir and he gets out. Really like Philip looking for the J4 here too, even though he didn't get him. I think it's the right idea. ADD was dead. So, I mean, like the one window where Fuego has a chance to maybe come back in, Fear of Star Forge really shut it on them. Again, really, I like the idea of the Ivern plus Varus. I think that the poke, especially into this team, and not allowing for them to get good conditions to fight. Always keeping your conditions good by having more poke and having Ivern. Was a good approach in the Fuego, a team that really likes to overgroup and force. And we saw that them get punished by that this game. Uh, quite a bit. <laughs> Butter my Tushi. Oh my god. I don't use Twitter. Kind of based, honestly. Nice way to dodge out on that one. No, I'm kidding. Um, all right, A to D. We take the root in. Gets found. And then, yeah, just went out on the trade. Zelt's still pushing bots, uh, bot lanes, so Fear Star Forge gets to continue to the force. Zelt has TP, but he's going to base and save it, so he's going to sack two inhibs. 
They're one in the hip for sure. Yep, all this just dead. Mataz goes into ABO. Uh, really good find there to take down ABO, but yeah. This time the W was nice. I, I again, I feel like if Philip goes up there and it's in both, then that's cleaner. But uh, flash Q from Instinct secures the kill and the game. Good game from Fear Star Forge. Really nice game from Philip. Uh, I think he really turned top lane around and had some nice angles. Took advantage of some of the overgrouping from Fuego, and that was game one. Game two. It is indeed the Kong. All right, game two. Uh, this draft was interesting. Um, I So the Ziggs, this tournament, going into this, is three and eight. And I believe Kaisa is six and two. And it's mostly into the Ziggs where these wins have been found. The Kaisa matchup in this tournament has been much better, and it's a lot of it's been teams who've just not been playing well with Ziggs and Grubs. Um, we did we did miss our Ziggs and Grubs window here for Fear Star Forge, but they end up winning later on because the Jax gets huge. What I underestimated going into this draft is how big Jax is this game, playing into Kaisa plus Smolder. Like with your E, there's really no significant magic damage that can come down this game if you are Jax. So you do get the spec heavy armor. And with your E, just like try and play, use that to play around Kaisa. I also think that Viras, looking back, it's a tough game for him to take angles, but I think that he w took a few angles that were a little bit too early. And Zach Renekton, again, looking back, was not super hot um, here for Fuego. I think um, I, I, the Zach idea is decent to attack the double mage comp, but um, we're going to end up seeing a lot of disjointed fights. Uh, just for whatever whatever reason that happened for Fuego, so. Um, I really underestimated how valuable the Jax was, though, this game going into this. It also helps that Jax got a lead, so. There's that, too. Runes, alright, that's what we were looking for. Uh, it's Fleet. Ability haste. Everything else pretty standard. We love this setup on Zach, by the way. Really good points. The heal revitalize with the conditioning is pretty big. Actually, yeah, I wonder what the math is though, like with, with like that or overgrowth. I assume that like when you're below the threshold for the heals, it's quite big. But yeah. Good trades. Um, mirrored pathing from the junglers here. Actually, going bot the top goes to support Philip. Where's the Zach going bot? Uh, this ended up being very well worth it again for Fear Star Forge. Jack should not get a lead with Wukong jungle into Renekton. I agree. ADD did not play this lane out well. Yeah, like, I don't know, him being, like, on this side of the lane is just so weird to me. Like, it, it should just be, like, a Q and then double E auto out when he goes this far up. And then he takes the auto to actually get in the wave. It's bad. Because now, like, Philip can follow like this, right? The the Q um, second for Philip was big, being able to follow the, the autos. And, like, this, too. Like, Philip just forcing him off the cannon. Really, really nice. I don't know if uh, ADD missed the XP, but still really good. Yes, I do not think ADD put well this game. Alright, full clear for the, uh... Full clear for XU and Monkey. Is that gonna answer? Yeah, also, boys all have got really big here in the mid lane. Again, the story game script went really well for Fear Star Forge. Like, yeah, the Jax made an act in TP. Well, yeah, it's bad. It's it's not good. You were 100% correct, Vendetta. We we did talk about that on on the cast. It was like, wow, that's big. 
Because now Philip like, gets to hold the TP. And I like what Philip does here in response, where he's okay because he's not against any real items to actually elongate this phase of laning. Because he knows that like if he gets a good base and TP back, then he's going to be really strong. And ends up being a phage versus phage components. So yeah, he gets a phage here. And then it's only components for the uh, Renekton's behind. Also, two control words bought for ADD. So like, a lot of gold wasted on non-combat items. Like, the CS was actually kind of close in the, at the end. But, yeah. And then it's first uh, Grubs going over to Axiu, which... What's really big, like, sometimes with Renekton games, Renekton's just big enough where you can't fight Grubs, and, like, that's it. The fact that Axiu got first three for a Ziggs team is really, really big. We want the Berserker win some reunion. We'll see where Berserker goes. I was so tempted, by the way, to, like, tweet out, like, quote retweet that C9 tweet and be like, the only thing I've learned this offseason is that Jack likes money more than Berserker. That would have been such a banger. Hey, what's up, Thomas? Uh, all right. Uh, I will give credit to ABO. A lot of the mid plays uh, went like he dealt with the pressure really well in mid lane. Because we're gonna get an all in bot. Instinct still catches the W after this, which is the big difference maker. Uh, and then actually tries to get in and save him, but is not able to cancel the W. You got to cancel it on the way, and it was just a little bit late. How to get blocked by Jack 101? I don't know. Uh, good job from Fuego here to at least for like push Philip off some waves, but again, like it go it goes bad. ADD did pop alt there, and like again, the way that ADD is playing out this matchup, he loses his W, and then burns his Fury on a second dash instead of queuing. I don't know if he had Q up or not, but like yeah, he gets forced out again. So he's got a TP back, and Philip gets us all the way in. Now this wave does get pulled on the Philip. So well done from ADD to freeze, but Philip still has a much better um, inventory and is up on the Renekton, which again should not be happening and is significant in the context of this game later on. Uh, okay, I, I think the Fierce Star Forge up until this point, we're playing out a good game. Like tops ahead, they got grubs uh, and bot is what it is, but this was the one mistake I feel like was pretty big for them. Um, ABO is going to get one shot and not burn flash. And I think if ABO flashes this, this game is actually pretty easy for uh, Fear Star Forge, but it ends up being really hard. He's got to flash this. Like, you just got to, like, flash over the wall or something. The fact that he gets completely comboed by the Zac and the Rakan without flashing or getting a Shockwave down is big. Because now, like, Instinct TPs and he's late. And what I want to have happen is A, Instinct, like, should get that wave base and then be here. So we shouldn't have been under threat for that play. But also, if we take Grubs. Then we just put instinct top and we overload that side. Like what ends up happening now is a really sloppy fight where Fuego just is able to stall. And like the fact that Fear Star Forge like only lose ABO in this is pretty significant. And then he TP's back. Let's nice cancel from Philip. But while this is going on, Kais is free farming. So it's expensive. And I, I really, again, I really don't like here. We have the option to put Instinct top and a Blaze out of mid. I want Instinct to be top. There is a TP from Smolder. Smolder would have to answer one of the lanes. If we put Instinct top after we get these grubs, that tower dies. Exu's healing off a of camp, and then he's going to go to the grubs. But if Instinct's top instead of the Ori here, I do think we get that turret. And sack for dragon, that's fine. Fill up to TP bot. And then we have instinct walk bot. So now it's the play for me. It's like, okay, let's overload bot. We can get XU to take his camps, then go into bot, and I try and play that on the next wave. Or not this wave, like the next one. 
And then instinct bases. I think. Like, yeah, they don't play that wave in. I really, I, or Winsome base, sorry. I really wanted Winsome to stay on the map here. I, I really want Winsome and Axie to just three man bot. Like, if you draw pressure away from Philip, too, by the way, like, he's Triforce, so, like, he's just winning this matchup right now. Anyway, like this sequence from fear, like instinct dropping here, I, I think that what ends up going wrong is like we put like they base and then they play away from the zigs right after the camps. I want them to take the camps and then play into the zigs and do it earlier than this. Like now we leave the zigs. And it's a nice angle from Bawa, by the way. He gets around all division to find this, which is really good. Instinct does snuff it out, so props to him. But, like, we're playing, like, playing away from the Ziggs, I, I think, obviously, Ziggs can bring some nice wave clear, but the fact that we leave him alone in his side is not the situ situation that Ziggs wants to be in. I think it's easier to be left mid. And we're not playing towards the Ziggs, like, to take plates or take, like, utilize our six grubs, which I do not like either. With that said, this deploy is nice. We're going to sack bot completely off this. Ziggs was forced to base, so he's going to go to mid. Uh, but again, like, we're flashless. Like, the rest of it's fine. Um, just Instincts hover, like, in the middle of the lane. I want Instinct to hover the top side of the lane. I think that he should be a little bit more cautious on the approach. So everything else is quite good. Uh, they just killed Instinct, so, like, the big tools are down. They are going to pop Zach ult, but it's really nice turn from ABO. If that E hits from Winsome, like, they get cooked. Ma Manaz doesn't hit that, and then they get Viros's, uh flash. Close from Winsome. No cigar, though. It's tier 1 boots against tier 2, so I feel like if Winsome has tier 2 boots, maybe he can hit both those E's. I don't know. Gonna swap Ziggs top and send Jack's bot in the Herald sequence. Yeah, I wanted them to do that on the Grubs. I, I, I think that for the Herald, you're actually kind of stuck there. Because Phillips, no TP. Like, two A's before. Nah, you just play this one out. Like, the Jax is winning. Yeah, you don't want to take Jax out of this winning position. It's fine. I think it was, like, what happened post-Grubs. Huh. <sighs> You know, this one's really close to hitting both these E's. Tier 2 boots OP. There we go. This is what we'd like to see, though. Like, the Ziggs TP to catch that is good. And they are going to leave Ziggs mid while Ori resets, which is fine. So that that, that was good from Fear Star Forge. Philip is up two levels on ADD, by the way. That's a bit of a problem. That's a bit of a problem. Good flash from a boy's all this time around. So they, they completely negate the early engage. When some is going to end up going down, they have the option to take the long play. But instead, they just play for the dragon. I think that, like, I like this from Fuego. They realize that they're scaling. They have two drakes. They should drop this one, just given where the comp is. I don't like that Fear Starforge do not sack this side. Like, the fact that ABO shows again uh, after just burning Flash in the initial play is poor. I think you sack that. If anything, like, you... You can... Ugh.
I think you just race to Drake. And then you, you can't have... Um, I guess a like ABO just like walked out. Uh, or he TP'd here. It's kind of a weird TP for me. I feel like Instinct can walk here. And then they can have it Ori walk mid, and then they all shift down into Drake after like Instinct kills one wave. I mean, Instinct, to be fair, is walking here. He just has to go back to manage mid. He ends up being late mid because he was walking. I think Instinct was doing the right thing. I think his TP from ABO was an oops. If he walks mid here, and they had the, the Ziggs just like trim this wave top or use an alt for it. Because the this wave, if he alts this wave, by the way, it's fine. Like he would kind of have it for. Oh, I guess it's rank one alt. He wouldn't have it. Yeah, we just get stuck. And they're trying to, like, make sure that... I think Fear has the right idea, because they're like, okay, let's have three top, we kill this wave, and then we can just shift everyone down as a team, right? Hey, Cubby, just now learning about this tourney, what's the stakes for the teams in it? Uh, 60k prize pool and some regional bragging rights on the line. Nothing about guest slots, though. Nothing about guest slots, guys. It was announced very early in the season. Yeah, like, we get... Yeah. Yeah. We see all to the wave. Still Drake. But I appreciate Alfuego. Like, again, this comp, they do not want to fight at this moment. So just by going away from the objective and getting gifts from Fear Star Forge, it's big. Uh, that said, this is where things get a little bit hairy. As Philip now jumps in, I do not really know why Philip TP'd up here. We have a big Ziggs ult. And then Fear Star Forge just long chases them. Uh, so ABO is just going to go get bot during this, which is okay. So the fact they survived it, it's good six ult. Uh, they get to take some shit. Get to play top in, and then they're playing bot in. And they got mid in. So like, the map's on fire now from Fuego because of that long chase, so it, that, that ended up being okay from Fear Star Forge. It was a little bit of an awkward TP, I thought, from Philip, but ends up being good. Thought it was odd that Zach kept ganking mid, but they didn't have huge kill pressure. I thought so too. I didn't really talk about that. I mean, I feel like they're just trying to like change that matchup mid so that Smolder could like free stack, and they did open up some space for Zelt to free stack. But yeah, I I don't think you're killing Ori in that scenario. Ganking top would have been better for them looking back, but even Jax I think is, is slippery slash sticky. I probably would just just focus bot. All right, they spotted Zach on top side here. You can see it pinged out. And so it actually knows he's first at this play. And they just send it, which is kind of pog. I respect it. They take the turret. They take ADD. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay, hold on. This is a bad fight for fear. I forgot about this one. Um, Yeah, actually, you go... Virus takes a really good angle. I think looking back now, I... Really focused on the Kaisen in this fight, but XU going over the wall here with no alt, I think is a little bit unwarranted. Because what happens is that Viras goes to the other side of the fight and shreks everyone. So like XU's trying to get on him now, but Viras is able to flash out. Uh, this E was really big from Viras too, because you can see Winsome's trying to get on him. So Winsome's going to prep a Q. You can see the Q's prepped here. He's in the auto animation, and then Kaisa goes invisible. So Winsome gets stuck, and the... Time buys another Q to kill Wukong. Then Virus could just continue the push in the fight, which is massive. I actually thought Fear lost this game. Because, like, the Smolder Kaisa do scale so hard. I thought, like, this was it. I really did. Yeah, like, they lost four. It was a four for one. Was Poppy banned? Yes, Poppy. Jax was picked on three, and Poppy was banned in the second phase. Did the, the Poppy Prio for Worlds is one of the things I'm more interested about, by the way, Thomas. I think there are so many champs that Poppy's just good and do in the meta. And I'm really curious, like, where where Poppy gets played and how, like, it, do teams just ban her? 
Okay, the big thing in this fight, looking back, tools are up again for Fuego, but their flashes are not. Uh, same for Fear, but uh, Philip has red buff, and that ends up being significant. Because ADD approaches from, like, a very... He kills the wave, and Philip gets stuck in behind him. I mean, I feel like we just lost track of where Philip was, and then Fuego just abandons ADD. Because ADD just gets one tapped. The red buff allows for the chase and the Orianna. And then on the other side of the fight, Ziggs gets one shot, but Instinct is at least able to get his load down. Oh no, he didn't ult. Uh, but Winsome finds Viros. Yeah, they find Viros, who's uh, Sumless. So really well played by Winsome. That was the big difference. The, the, the red buff and that. And then... Philip goes over the wall. And Zelt just dies. Because our Jax is big. Nice shockwave combo from ABO too. He's able to kite out. Really good focus from ABO. And Montage just gets stuck. So yeah, I mean, just like... like Fuego finds one really good fight, and then the next fight's really poor. And just like that, Fear Star Forge kind of back in the game. And it's off the back of this Jax that is just humongous. See, I feel, I mean, unironically smashed this uh, series, this game and series. All right, good denying the red buff here from Fear Star Forge and XU. Uh, I don't get to see how this play, uh, this Baron develops um, because of the replay, but they're gonna hard to play in the bot. Denying the red buff's nice, and then they zigs the turret. Phillips now gonna fix mid. They're gonna keep on playing down here. I think this is all fine, all fine and dandy. Uh, I like where XU's playing. And then, like, Philip was able to get out. Philip bought all the time in the world here on the level 16 Jax. The Stair Axe, the stun wasn't enough. He gets another Counter Strike off with the Sundered Sky. And then that's like everything was just used on Philip to try and kill him. The fact they didn't kill him was huge. Survives a Smolder Burn by a hair. And then Fear Star Forge run away with the rest of the fight. Not much else to talk about there as everything was used on Philip. I feel like Viras' uh, Kaisa alts again were just a wee bit early. Because, like, now you're down ult as Kaisa and then loses Flash, so it just gets hard. Of course, the call there was to kill Philip. They were not able to do so, so I think that one's fine. But that is something, like, common, I think, in some of these fights for Viros. It, it is a hard game to play Kaisa into, because, like, if your ult isn't good, then you face the Zig zone and the Orianna zone, and as a Kaisa, like, that just sucks ass. You know? Like, unironically, poke Kaisa, probably more valuable this game. Fleet Kaisa feels too nerfed, even the Ziggs. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of reasonable, too. Unironically, it was a poke Kaisa game for Virus. Like, here, like, th like this, Virus just went so early, this fight, you know? Like, and he was not able to find Instinct, and now you're just mincemeat to the Bash Brothers of XU Philip. Rest of the fight, ABO hits a nice two-man ult on the Zelt and Mataz. Or Mataz. For whatever reason, I struggle with that name, this tournament. Mataz or Mataz? You know, it's Mataz, but I keep on saying Mataz. Uh, it was a good win. I mean, again, Fuego had like one fight where I thought they almost turned it around, and then they did not. All right, now it's for the two pissinings. Game three. Um, I really like what happens with the Seraphine here. Um, there's an Ash Karma Sedge, so we're going to try and... I, I think the Karma Sedge, honestly, was picked to prevent a Viego here. Because we know how good Montaz's Viego is, and we were talking about this on cast. Playing Viego into Karma Sejuani feels like shit. And Montaz is someone that, like, is going in for this team, right? Uh, so they swap over to Vi. 
So Vi Duty, which is fine, into all this. Uh, then it's the Senna. So this backline artillery, it's just super outranges this. And then it's Aurora got nerfed pretty hard, so ABO is going to try and play it so they can try and play fast enough to win. It's not the case. Uh, Gwen makes this game pretty hard because like everyone's kind of short range. And you have uh, Senna Seraphine behind you. Um, the draft was decent. Like I think it's still winnable for Fear Star Forge because in theory they should have uh, early prio bot and prio mid. But then the level one happens. Yeah, this was a level one, guys. Don't even walk in. We we just see ADD. We're gonna go for the play, and there's everyone. And that's two kills, one to ADD and one to Zelt. Uh, runes real quick. Nothing super interesting. This can be Comet. I like my com Comet Karma. Anyway, this game gets uh, really off its rockers early. Yeah, Zelt is two on like the first creep wave. So ABO is like having trouble dealing with that. Uh his pressure is gonna be like really delayed and uh the boots from Zelt, I think were a smart buy in this lane. If you can uh space some of Aurora's abilities, that's big. That said, really like what Axie does here by skipping three camps to go into ADD. He wasn't able to get the wave in, so they at least are able to turn top. I guess Winsome's banned from playing ranged supports. Oh no. Yeah, I mean this lane was not going well. It was also a longsword three pot from instincts, and yeah, twenty five percent win rate in rain sports. Ouch! They said the revisit really good here from Exu. I thought Exu actually did his damnedest in this game. So yeah, I mean ADD just did not respect the revisit. And again, he's flashless. That said, this wave is huge. They do spot Montas, Hermitas. I mean, I did think there was, like, an angle in this game where it was actually winnable. Um, nice pull here from ADD. We're trying to bait in the fact that he has Mataz, too. Nice jump angle from Zelt, by the way. Um, ABO didn't react well to this, but I, I like how Zelt, he's not jumping the out of his W connect here. It's something like, if you're going to play the LB matchup into Ari. Like, Ari has her charm, right? Goes in a straight line. So if you're LB and you're jumping on top of the front of the hitbox for Ari, it really increases the odds. What you want to do is, like, your W is yay big. You want to position it so, like, only a piece of it hits Ari. So you're able to take two angles like this to actually fuck around with charm. Uh, and that's something that Zelt's actually doing well here with the rocket jump. Because he dodges out on the E, and then he gets the proc, too. So actually, well, well played by Zelt. I really like that. So something to think about if you play this match at home, if you're playing against Aurora or Ari. Uh, I said, Philip, I thought he snuffed out the fact that Jungler was here, but good pull from ADD. Philip has really bad conditions, so he tries to get the wave in and fails. So ADD is back to being in control of this lane. Good timer from um, Mataz. Mataz. Yeah, I was amazed that Alistar didn't get played in this series. Like, four game, Fearless, we, we usually always have Alistar get played. Um, just he is strong. No Alistar in the series. Then this is the fight, guys. Um, I appreciate the attempt from ABO. Like it's a good alt. The thing for me is that Philip tries to alt ADD and doesn't alt Mataz. If he alts Mataz, they get the kill. It's fine. Watch Gwen in this fight, guys. ADD goes fucking huge. First star hits three. Three. Snip, snip. I, oh, that was the second and third alt, sorry. Like ADD just and Zelt just cleaned everything up. I know Zelt got the kills, but ADD really made that one happen. And they follow it through and... 
get the dive. And this game is over. Keep calling a blaze all of ABO just faster. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's a common nickname that he had too while he was in LCS. Like a lot of the casters were, were, would call and refer to him as ABO. So it's not like it's a made up nickname for him. Um, yeah. I was told apparently in the fan fiction community, it means something crazy. That's very not safe for work. Um, what ended up happening here? I mean, if you're a go for the overload, and this game's hard. Yeah, they get two. I mean, well done. Like, Zelt gets a bunch of free turrets. Zelt got so rich this game, like, they almost have to play away from Tristana because of how fed Trist is, but, like, that's just such a big problem in this game. Like, I mean, Zelt can just break the game. And again, you're playing against a Senna Seraphine, so the fact you're down 3k gold at this point, like, I mean, this is pretty much just game. Like, this is just game. Also, the Gwen already fed. Like, it, this game is really hard. This game is really hard. Gabby, why did you make me Google ABO? I'm sorry. You know what the best part was? This would be great, but Actually, coming. hold on. Uh, Zeke55, thanks for the follow. Vendetta, you know how I found out about that? It was Emily Rand at NACL Finals. She told me, she's like, do you know what ABO means? <laughs> I was like, no. She's like, I cannot tell you. <laughs> she's like, I cannot tell you. It was so fucking funny. So yeah, she forced us to look it up. The last person you would expect to know. It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. And kind of not in this game, because again, like, this game was so over. This game, the, the last two games of the series were honestly kind of hard to cast, because they were such stomps. I don't like, I, I think it's a lot harder to make stomps interesting. I think I didn't lay out a comeback mechanic well enough for the teams. I just kind of said it was over for Fear Star Forge without detailing why. But I feel like Senna, Seraphine, Triss, Gwen is enough. Oh, by the way, all 10 champions drafted in this game are girls. It, this was the girl, our producer goes like, after level one, it's the girl power game, which was hilarious. Flago had the girl power. Nice escape from ABO. Uh, Zelt went too deep for that, so they always get the shutdown, but it goes on to Karma. Which isn't, like, terrible, because actually getting the Echoes is a good spike. Instinct, though, gets caught mid. It was the power puff comp. I feel like I want instinct to wait to use the arrow, by the way, to follow Philip. Uh, but that's just me. 
Uh, ADD TP'd for this, so at least I get a TP out. But instinct flashing is a bummer. And then they actually tried to yoink the Herald that was not doable, and instead ABO dies up top, and then XU dies, and that's truly the game. Uh, he doesn't die. Never mind, Mat Mataz dies. That's right. Nice salt. Or wait, how how did get stun? Yeah, it canceled the Q with the stun. Nice. I mean, again, I thought Axie actually played well this game. Like, he had a really tough map to play out, and he tried to find advantages both top and bot. Not really bot, but he did his, he did his damnedest. I feel like this this was the game where, like, in uh, Fearless, sometimes you just have some games that are over in draft. I mean, I don't think this one's over, over in draft, but after level one, I do think this game is pretty cooked. Ezreal was not picked until game four, which I found interesting because that pick after game four is now 7-1 in this tournament. Most deaths in my pickums thoughts? I had Leona. I think Leona probably is going to be really big. But I don't know. It might just be Poppy if Poppy's like getting through and it's Poppy support. If Poppy supports the meta man, that champion's going to die so fucking much. Should not be possible. Yeah. But the level one happened. And all their lanes got fucked. I, I agree. Like, I think it's a playable game. I just think that there is a really harsh breakpoint. Where the Fuego comp, because of the sustain, like would would be able to take over if Fear Starforge don't snowball their weed hard enough. I do like the Fuego comp, legitimately. Like, but like Fear Starforge, they took all the playmaking tools to try and beat it before it gets online, and then the level one was tragic, mid was tragic, and it just yeah, it just got online really early. Uh, by the way, ADD burned alt there, and he finds a silver kill with no alt here. Uh, by the time his next alt comes up. This was nice. Like, the arrow connecting is big, but it still is just a trade. And then ADD in the bot lane found a 1v1 here. They went in the brush and got onto a boy's elve. Fucking Gwen. Yeah, this was ridiculous, too. Instinct could have spaced this a wee bit better. The first one. I think the second one's fine. But yeah, that happened, and then Baron goes down. And again, th this game, like, for me, it was, like, there's really not a ton of interesting stuff to review. I, I thought Axiou's game was actually really interesting to watch, because considering he's 4-1-5, and five, given the level 1, like, what he did, I thought Axiou actually, again, played a very good game. Uh, Mataz didn't have his best game. He, he got caught out a couple times randomly. Yeah, like ADD is just doing this. So we have a straight 1v2 just being taken by ADD. Good luck this game. Yeah, and then this happens. Sweet. And ADD TP's in. Nice alt. Connects on the Ash. That's a free kill. And Fuego finds the victory. Good victory from Fuego. I, I don't want to, like, take away from their victory at all. I just think that this game was going to be one-sided after le that level one, for sure. Um, but, yeah, I mean, well played. I thought Zelt had a really nice game, did a nice job of funneling himself. Um, and ADD, obviously, went sicko mode, so that was nice. All right, game four draft. Last one that we have. Game 4, Fearless Gulp. Uh, hey, shout out to Thomas for shouting that out. And also shout out to the fact that there are no second rounds of bans in Game 4, Fearless. Game 5, if it gets to that tomorrow, would be no bans in general. That said, Ezreal, Pryo pick. Ezreal, 6-1 and one in the tournament, by the way. Um, that looks like a G. There we go. Getting better at drawing on screen. Lucian and Maokai are the response. Lucian being a bit of a flex. Um... Ends up being, I mean, I think, like, the Nami puts Lucian bot immediately, so, like, I would say it's a flex, but it's not, because they picked Nami, right? Uh, that's Olaf Syrah. 
I, I like the Olaf Zyra. When I saw Malachi and Brand Band, I knew that Zyra was going to come through for Axie. I called it. Philip has been denied Olaf. The fact that he blinded it, though, I will say, like, Lucian can kind of deal with it, but not really. Um, and yeah, you kind of merc Nami as Olaf. Like, you actually love your life playing against Nami as Olaf. Champ doesn't do shit to you. So, yeah. Anyway, ends up being a poke comp. As the Kled for ADD was the counterpick. The Kled was bad. Uh, keep in mind that, like, good matchups against Olaf. I think Nar is playable. Um, I think Jax is playable. And Camille is kind of playable. And those are all off the table. Um, I don't know what you play into Olaf here. I think the pick, like, honestly should have been a, a Mordekaiser. Uh, and then I also did not love the Aurelian Soul on 5 because we have a poke comp and identity with a split push threat. And the A Soul can get outranged by the uh, Jace, Zyra, Ezreal. Now, it, I think it fits the... Like, you can have the other two lanes be a bridge for the A Soul, but you're really not going to have any prio from mid jungle if you go for this with the Maokai A Soul. And you're just playing on, like, big circle, big circle, big circle, R forward. Uh, but much like game 1... Fear taking the poke identity. They're going to make sure that Fuego never get good conditions to actually fight. I think that was their game plan going into this series, and it was executed quite well. Runes. PT Ezreal. I'm a fan of the Conqueror Ezreal, uh, but with the Amumu, your power comes from level 1, level 2, level 3. Uh, Amumu, like, scales downwards pretty much every level. I fucking hate support Amumu. It's a pet peeve of mine, but... It was, it was good, this game. Because it got a level 1. Uh, it's first strike Lucian, so playing off of uh, the W's for Lucian, and then the R's to stack up first strike to take advantage of the damage amp. Everything else pretty stock standard. It's uh, the Comet Zyra. I, I like Conquer Zyra a lot, actually, but Comet's fine. Mm-hmm. No ulti, Hunter, Amuma support. Yeah, we need to go fucking fast, man. We need to go fast. That's it. I'm slamming a movement support first day of the split pug. All right, actually did an interesting path here. I think that he might have been worried about like his bot camps getting walked into by Maokai, who could three buff and walk into his top side. That does end up being the case for Mataz, but he actually goes mid. And this kind of goes bad for Fuego. I want to see if Fuego could play this one better. Oh, that was one bad click from Zelt. Because Zelt burns Flash here. Yeah. I, honestly, if Zelt has a better click here... Like, this is all fine. It's it's this click, yeah. Like, he goes back for a heartbeat, kind of thinking that Mataz has it. I think this, uh... Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, ABO gets out of this, which is significant. And he got the wave all the way in. Because now it's no Flash Asol, and XU punishes. Axu had a fantastic series, but this was his best game. Actually, his best game honestly might have been the last game, given how fucked that map was. But I really like how he played this game. He ends up cleaning up all of his camps. It's a little bit late, but again, it's a flashless ASOL. And he ends up being in position to punish. It's the E. E is telegraph. There's no flash. Gives it over to uh, ABO. Gonna check the wraps in case Malachi started Raptors. Which I like. And then wards so he gets tracking. And sees the Krug camp. And he gets to go take his own shit. So no invade. And you can see Winsome, by the way, was in uh, defending the re Raptor respawn. So I love this from Winsome too. Really, really good stuff from Fear Starforge. The fact that he's on the Raptor respawn. They got Ziggs. So if Malachi was going for that, it's fucked. No mid. Support's there. Really, really good.
from Fear of Starforge, actually. They played a good map. Like, this was a good map from Fear of Starforge. And then, yeah, Winsome fi finds one. That's a crazy one. Guesses the dash and dodges out on the bubble. It's another one on Balda, and this is, like, perfectly chain. So, XU, two positive plays for mid and bot. Really big. And then can farm his topside camps and then go to Grubs. Like, it's chill. Well, ADD. Phage matched for top lane. But he kind of missed his, like, windows to kill. Like, you want to Shrek in the first couple levels as Clyde versus Olaf. And then you get drastically outscaled. Okay. Ends up being a dragon fight. Uh, this XU skips over his camps and comes straight here. Uh, I mean, Mataz just goes down instantly. Bala's level 3. Uh, again, Mataz is on this. I think they were expecting a trade, but it's only one grub for XU. We skipped over all of his camps, and then they come contest this. They have sums down. I, I, they know Mataz is no flash, so... Uh, the fact that they got him, and then Winston gets the flash out of uh, Viros, too. And it's Dragon for XU. Love the one grab, uh, gr uh, grub into take. Now XU gets to clear his camps out and play towards top, and it's really big. Hey, what's up, Quantum? So yeah, really, really well played by XU again. I thought XU had a fantastic map. The one grub in the contest Drake was a very good call from Fear Star Forge. And then he's going to skip over his Krugs, make his way all the way up, and do the Grubbos, which Philip will help with. So, well done. And yeah, it's just really tough for Fuego to play this map. Like, the, they get outranged by the Jace and the Ezreal. Both are ahead. Crazy Flash is a cleansed out. Yeah, but I think if you cleanse out, then you can just catch another Q, which I know the it's a reduced cooldown, but still not fantastic. I think Flash is okay. I think he would have taken a lot of damage if he didn't Flash out, given where he was. Yeah, Philip not taking the bait. Good tank here from Winsome. Another pick up most of the culling. And then the A Soul is just getting peppered. XU gets in here. Get some vision help. And then ADD is dead. This actually was a little bit close. Again, mid prio. We just had Mataz base. ADD not. I guess this wave is coming to him. How close is ADD on this? Oh, if he auto queued, he actually got the remount. So that was pretty close. Well done, though, from ABO and Philip. They find it before the remount comes in. If that remount comes in, it could have been a little bit frisky. And Philip picking up that kill. He's set for life now in this line. Going to be off towards the stride breaker. Stride breaker really good this game. Zelt went for the G belt first. Can't really blame him. He's just getting peppered by. Um, Jace. It's like half a shock blast worth of health, you know? Yep. Philip waits to throw the axe until after the remount's done, and then ADD just dies. Again, he lost flash in the last play. Philip's ahead, and Philip just smorked him. This flash from Axie ends up being really good. Gets him out of the tidal wave, which was in the choke, and then Zelt has flash, but um, he gets caught by he's trying not to use it i think the alt of this feat is good um but the uh true shot barrage from instinct ca caught three then winston got out viras has to flash fo uh forward abo cleans him up this is game guys i mean it, it it's a 5k gold lead for fear star forge and two drakes and I, I i gotta give a lot of credit to xu i thought xu played a great map I really think that XU's first few levels, like, he didn't go for the default full clear on Zyra, and it got him a couple of good timers, uh, like, around mid especially, to punish the uh, first play from Mataz, which didn't work out with Zelt. All right, so they deny one Garou, but it's still tough. Winston's going to be the sacrificial mummy. He had no alts. Uh, but this TP from Philip was massive. It could have been a little bit better. I think this first axe from Philip was a little bit too deep into the fight because they're retreating towards him. 
So if he was able to pick this up, it could have been better. Like, because if he acts as Aesol again, Zelt for sure is dead or, like, has to blow Flash. But. Nice, man. Look at how useful Nami is against Olaf, guys. Yeah, Felipe. Felipe was our MVP of the series. Uh, really good to see, though, from Philip. Like, he has not had a great tournament, but he had a great day today. So it was really, really good to see. I mean, Fear had a good, good day today. I thought they played at some really strong maps. There are a couple of maps they played I thought were really, really good for them. Uh, this being the probably the best one. None of the, like, chain inting and dying they did against Pain. Where it's, like, everyone just, like... There was, like, two sequences of that series. Where, like, literally just, like, three or four members, like, one in one by one and died across the rift. None of that shit today. Yeah, I mean, there's really not much else to talk about this game, guys. Like, this game is over. Uh, attempt onto a boy's olive is dissuaded. Don't hate the attempts. The hammer was big, though. Nope, oh, Shock Blast. If the Shock Blast is correct for Mabio, it's fine. I think I thought he played this really well, just besides this. Eight of these still would have flashed it, so. Oops. It would have been a little bit more difficult to flash, but probably can still make that one happen. All right, free Herald. Yeah, again, just like poke him out. Never let Fuego take a comp or a fight when the conditions are good for them. Uh, that's kind of the, just the game point of the comp here for Fear Star Forge and went really well. Helps when you get some big leads. And Felipe was a menace in this game. Games like this make me want to play Olaf top, man. Olaf top is fun to smurf on, for sure. I mean, this fight was kind of funny. <laughs> like, yep. 200 gold for Felipe! Good try from Exi that almost got... Uh, Viros would have gotten some sums off him. Uh, I don't really know what else to talk about. I mean, this game is, it's a 12k gold lead, guys. All we have to do is just, like, act, see champion and hit them with Shock Blast and Mystic Shots. Very difficult to execute comp from here, haha. -ha. Oh, actually, there was, there, there is, like, one fuck up from Fear Star Forge here. They just let the Baron get a little bit too low. Like, I'm super down for this play. Winsome is really deep. So, that is kind of an oops. Like, he somehow just walked out, which is crazy. But they let the Baron get too low. I respect the fuck out of Mataz for this play, by the way. I respect the fuck out of this. This game is ogre. Like, if he steals it or not, I do not care. Respect. And he got it. So that was actually, like, a pretty big play. I mean, it's not nearly close to enough. Like, this early game was just that disastrous. But, um, yeah, it was a pretty fun play. 
So I like, keep in mind, fear dropped that like three and a half K. It got up to 4.7 K. Uh, if that's on a 4K health threshold, which is pretty typical for teams, then that play is not available. But big respect. What you know, you have been killing it on the cast. Who are you predicting tomorrow in the finals? Guys, I'm done with my work for Riot for the split, so we're predicting with our heart, fear win. All right, and this is why, guys, Big Felipe is going to drop Dong on the Rift. Watch this shit. He's stalling out for Ragnarok, by the way. You can see the one in the top left real quick. And thanks. We tried to give some good casts for the end of the year, some international tournaments. So I appreciate that, PP Doc. I always try my best, but, you know, a little bit extra behind it just, uh, when the stakes are a little bit higher. Anyway, yeah, he's going to get cutted out, but that's fine. He already took down two with him. So, yeah, uh, like Baron advantage, like any sort of Baron advantage, just already gone, right? Because uh, they have Baron buffs, we're not around to defend from this. Full five games for Fearless, that'd be fun. Bro has the fattest dong. I mean, when your favorite anime is Run a Girlfriend, you know. No, I'm kidding. I, we, 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 gotta let it, we gotta let him move on from that. Stage will be packed tomorrow. Easiest 3 0 paint I've ever seen. That's true. It's a weekend, so the uh, studio is going to be packed full of pain fans. So, um, yeah. It'd be cool. I mean, it'd be cool. I like the, I don't know, man, the atmosphere. It seems so awesome in that studio. Dude, if Winston flashed hard this, by the way. I'm I'm super down for the R flash from Winsome. Like they were warding for it. Ah, uh, Philip can't follow, which is hard. The sacrificial Mumu. Eight of these all doesn't connect. Get the win given the sentiment in Brazil about the conference. <laughs> oh, Brady's all here. <sighs> so not super ideal, but ABO cleans up a Nexus turret for it, so it's fine. And that Shock Blast is just stupid. That's the second Nexus turret. Waits out the dash until the Q's. That Q still hits. And then Philip is somehow uh, still around, by the way. And living. I think he just walked through the turret. Oh, no, it's not on him. It's not on him. Okay, it's fine. Oh, wait, no, it was on him. That's hilarious. That's game, guys. That's game. Congrats, Fear Star Force. They looked they looked much better today compared to yesterday. Uh, props to Philip and Instinct, who I thought really stepped up, and Philip was our most valuable player of the series. So, uh, and then Exu keeps on putting together really, really good, uh, really good games. So, yeah, shout out to them. Anyway, uh, sh thanks so much for tuning into this VOD review, guys. I know it was a little bit quick for a four-game series, but those last two games were very one-sided. As always, if you guys enjoy the content, feel free to drop a like, comment, and/or sub. I still got to get through uh, Grand Finals, which will be played tomorrow, as well as Worlds coming up. Uh, so until then, follow me over at KBXX. I appreciate the support. We'll see you next time.